Hello, I'm Stephanie Quine with the Weekly Law Report, bringing you the top stories in Australian law and business. But first, Lawyers Weekly is proud to launch its 30 Under 30 Awards, recognising the best young talent in Australia across a range of legal practice areas. The awards will be held at a gala cocktail event in Sydney in June, and nominations close on the 10th of May. Now for the news. In the wake of Margaret Thatcher's death, high-profile barrister Geoffrey Robertson QC has rejected praise of her political legacy. Robertson described the height of Thatcher's era as a period of unalloyed greed. The human rights lawyer based in London told AAP the Iron Lady was incapable of empathising with the poor and disadvantaged during her 11 years as Prime Minister. From a human rights perspective, Robertson condemned Thatcher for drinking whisky with former Chilean dictator Augusto Pinochet, but conceded her efforts in the Falklands War led to the overthrow of the barbaric military government in Argentina. Thatcher died on Monday, aged 87. Staying in London now, and Julian Assange could be given safe passage to Australia if he wins a seat in the Australian Senate. That's according to barrister Greg Barnes, who is running the WikiLeaks party campaign for a seat in the Victorian Senate. Barnes himself was disendorsed as a candidate for the Liberal Party in 2002 over his criticism of Howard's asylum seeker policy. He denied the WikiLeaks bid is a publicity stunt or money-making exercise, but motivations aside, Assange faces serious hurdles in his bid for an upper house seat. You can read more about that at our website. In other news, partner movements continue at record pace. Seven partners from Cause Chambers Westgarth have left the firm over the past month. M&A partners Jeremy Davis, James Rosa and Byron Costa defected to Johnson, Winter and Slattery earlier this month. Davis said Cause is trying to be everything for everyone and losing focus on transactional work in the process. The M&A trio ruled out going to a global firm because they believe the model is not yet proven. While the globalisation of the profession continues to play out, China appears to remain the most attractive commercial target in the Asia-Pacific. Herbert Smith Freehill's M&A partner, Rebecca Maslin Stanich, said the sheer volume of inbound and domestic deals in China is acting as a stabiliser for global M&A activity. A total of 142 inbound and domestic deals worth US $26.3 billion made China the most active of the BRIC countries in Q1, according to Merger Market. The value of Chinese M&A was down 26% compared to the same period last year, but Maslin Stanage said this hasn't made a dent in the overall strength of Chinese M&A. That's it for the Law Report today. You can find further coverage of those stories and many more at our website. Keep up to date with the latest legal news and views throughout the week by following us on Twitter, liking us on Facebook and joining in discussions on LinkedIn. I'm Stephanie Quine. See you next time.